In the past, I've tried many ways to create a stretchy joint structure, and it's so simple, it's ridiculous. So to begin with, I have a simple cube that I've segmented into this long, basically, rectangle. And so first we want to do is we want to create an armature. I've already created one. Uh, don't forget, all you have to do is press Shift A, and then choose Armature, and it'll create your first bone. So then I'm going to edit my bones, press the tab key on my keyboard, or of course you can just go to edit mode by using the pull down in the upper left hand corner. And I'm going to select the tail of my bone, and I'm going to press E on my keyboard to extrude it, and I'm going to press Y so that it extrudes specifically in the, along that axis. I'm using normals right now as my uh, orientation. And so usually when you're creating joints, they're going to orient on the Y. It's going to be up and down, but it's basically the Z axis. So in my front view, I'm going to bring that up. And all the way just past the end of my cube or my uh, large rectangle, rectangle here. Bring it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to extrude one more time and create just a small joint here just past the end. Now for the basic uh, GUI structure we basically need a base, the actual bend, the part that's going to be bendy, and then we need sort of a, an end control here or an end bone that's going to essentially guide the or aim our structure essentially. And so now you can go to the properties and then under properties under view uh, viewport display where it says display as you want to switch it to B bone and that basically just stands for a uh, bendy bone and so right now you can see we still have one two three bones and that's pretty much how it's going to stay for the setup you go to the specific bone that you have selected in this case it's going to be our bendy bone and I'm going to rename it and just call it my bendy just to make it more specific. And the ends, the one at the top, I'm going to call that one my bendy end. And I'm going to make sure it has the deforms disabled so that when we actually do the skinning, it doesn't receive any control over the mesh itself. We want the mesh to be completely controlled by our bendy. And the same thing for our starting one. Make sure it doesn't have any deform on it. And I'm going to uh, call this one my bendy start. Okay. And so now, before I do anything else, I'm going to go to my bendy bone. I select my bendy, and then go to the bone and bring up bendy bones. Now, every bone that you create has this option available. Uh, however, the effects of it aren't really visible unless you switch the armature into essentially B-bone mode or B-bone display mode. Uh, while the effects of it may, some of the effects may carry over, basically you won't be able to truly control your bendies unless you're in this view mode. Now a couple things you can do in this, in this view mode is you can actually select that bendy bone and you can change the display size easily. Control Alt S on the keyboard, or you can use the attributes under the properties to change how they look. The same goes for the end ones. Now, usually with the the start and the end bones, I will make those much larger than the bendies, just so it makes it a bit easier to grab them, select them, and generally to distinguish them from the bones that are just basically driving the weight, uh, driving the deformation. These are going to be my, essentially my control bones. And so I want to make sure they're going to be easy to see, to select, and everything while I'm working. Now, of course, you can go in later and change the shape so that these bones actually look like what you would expect when you're looking at a rig, which is a uh, usually some sort of curve control 
and that's fairly simple to do but that's a completely different tutorial so we'll talk about that later now with our bendy I'm going to come in and set up the segments now my mesh essentially has about I don't know 18 different segments I'm going to set the segments on my bendy bone to be something like we'll say I don't know 32 it's probably a bit much. Let me bring it down. I'll actually just bring it down to around 18. Or maybe a bit more. We'll do 20. It should be fine. Okay, so now as you can see, we actually see the segments within our bone now. Even though we are selecting it, it's still just one bone. Now, the great thing about bendies is that uh, because it's literally just one bone, when you skin it, you just give that bone complete influence over the segment that you want to affect. And then if you have any other parts of a mesh that are sort of it's blending into, then you can just basically sort of 50% the weights in there and kind of tweak the weights to get them to blend smoothly between the two different segments. Uh, we'll do a demonstration of that a little bit later. Uh, but essentially, this is the basic structure that you're going to need. Now, once you have this structure in place, you want to set it up so that our bendy segment responds to basically our start and our end bones. Right now they are part of the same hierarchy, but we need to do a couple things before we actually complete this. First of all, we're going to take the end and we're going to right click, parent, and clear. And we're going to basically disconnect that bone. Because we don't want that bone to basically be connected into the hierarchy uh, that it's controlling because it'll cause some double transformations. So I'm going to take this one and I'm actually going to, what I usually do is I'll actually parent it to something ahead of it. So it's still part of the hierarchy, but it's not in the hierarchy that it's trying. Like it's not, it's going to control the end of the bendy bone. We don't want the end bendy bone to feed into it as well because it'll cause things to sort of freak out a little bit. And so I'm going to parent that, keep offset. So now this one is actually connected to this one. And of course, this one's connected to this one. So it still responds to the basic hierarchy. Uh, next, I'm going to take my bendy and I'm going to go to the start down here at the bit where, uh, and the viewport display under bendy bones. Under properties, we go to start handle and I'm going to tell it absolute. Now, Basically what this does is we're going to tell it to essentially try to match the angle of the start and the end handles so that it truly responds to them uh, for orientation, not just translation. And so we need to tell it what to respond to. Now we don't want to tell it to respond to itself, we need to tell it to respond to the different ends. So in this case, start end is going to be our bendy start. And end handle is going to be our we can set that to absolute, and that's going to be our bendy end. And so, start, end. It's that simple. Okay? Uh, so, once that's in place, now we need to go to uh, basically pose mode so we can set up some bone constraints. And so, we leave edit, and we go to pose mode. And don't forget, if you're going to pose mode, you have to be selecting a bone, and then you can choose to go to pose mode. If you're selecting geometry, it'll always go to something related to geometry, be it edit or weights or something like that. So we select our end and then our bendy. And in this case, our end is going to control the bendy. And then we can do control shift C, and it'll bring up our various constraints that we can add there and it basically adds a constraint with the target so it'll automatically target the object that was selected second or selected last so stretch two and essentially that is the basic setup so if i grab my end joint or my end bone right now and i pull it we've already got our squash and stretch and when i rotate it bends everything nicely and to further demonstrate how that's working let's go to our geometry I'll make my geometry a bit wider so we can really get a clear image of the impact so 
Let's make it, let's say, and that's good. So select the geometry, shift select just the bin, uh, select, shift select the arm armature itself, control P, and then choose with automatic weights. And then I'm going to select my geometry. I'm going to alt, uh, I have a quick key set up for this, but it's basically with the geometry selected, go to weight paint. And we can see that it's completely red, which means that it should have full influence. And if we go over and check our <coughs> shape data for the geometry, we see that the bendy is the only influence. And that's because I disabled deform for both of our end objects. Now, of course, if you have more than one uh, bone within your armature, you're going to have multiple showing up, and you'll have to go in and curate the weights a bit. But as it is, we're in a good place. And so when I rotate, you see the geometry moves cleanly. When I twist it, it twists nicely. And notice how it's deforming cleanly, getting a very nice deformation, even though that single bone don't forget, that's a single bone that has complete control over it. And even when you switch it back to uh, just your standard, your default bo bone mode, you see if the bendy is still active. Now, of course, you can't really see the different scale and size that you'd create it for the, bend the opposite objects to make them the bendy objects and the bones. Um, everything still works the right way. So you can actually have multiple uh, setups in here, regardless of whether or not some are bendy and some are not. 